Uh, hello, and uh, in this video I'm going to show you how to use Reifier Crux modifier, new modifier in version 1.59, uh, which was created specially for creating uh, animatable cracks over a refractive surface like glass, and I mean real 3D cracks, not uh, flat 2D cracks. And uh, first uh, thing you have to do to start using cracks is to get uh, fragments. Uh, original cracks pattern which you will start review later so for that purpose I have this simple box with some simple gray glass material and this is how it looks my render right now nothing special as you can see and uh, first uh, thing I will do is apply refire fragmenter here uh, set let's say 400 fragments and uh, hit fragment Okay, so uh, this is how Refire Cracks works. It takes all interfaces, I'll show you them. Okay, so here's my interfaces. As you can see, Refire Fragmentor leaves selected all interfaces, so you can later ma manipulate with them. So uh, Refire Cracks all, uh, takes all these inner uh, faces and deletes them. Deletes them and uh, uh, weld all vertices together. So if I will apply refire cracks right now, uh, okay. First time, let me render what I have right now with all these cracks. Okay, so this is how it looks right now with all these fragments, and uh, of course sometimes you need to animate uh, the growth of these cracks through time, and this is where you need to start with refire cracks. So if I will apply it right now. I can delete this editable poly, I don't need it. Uh, you don't see any changes in viewport right now, but if I will apply editable poly over refire cracks, and let me weld this, and if I will uh, go to element and hit here, as you can see right now, I have one big element, and I don't have any inner surf inner faces, only outer faces, because uh, cracks, refire cracks modifier removed all inner faces. And my render will look right now on ren uh, if I will render it. Okay, as you can see right now, I am back with my original object. There are no any inner surface, any cracks, any fragments, just one big element. And this is my idea of verify cracks modifier. You can using this modifier, you can reveal what you already have. So uh, I will remove it. And here's my center helper, which you can animate as well and move at any position. So I'll put it here, see in this corner, and here's my mine uh, main uh, property. It's called radius, and I will start increase it. And as you can see, here's a small sphere start appearing. So I am increasing it, and uh, as you can see, it start starts reveal all these interfaces which were removed, and now I can see them. Also, as you can see, it still keeps them selected. So I can, let's say, apply tessellation modifier and with some negative tension so uh, actually let, let me animate this cracks, let's say through time 90 it will cover all the geometry so here's what I have right now So here, this is how my cracks grow. Of course, you can animate and make this growth more interesting. I'm going to track view and play this with this somehow. Let me show you just basic, let's say, more interesting uh, s animation setup. Set insert keys and make it not so uh, smooth. So I will put one here, then it's slowed down, then again increase the speed and again slow down and then again it will go even further. So uh, this is how it looks right now. So we can spend a little bit more time to make it more believable, but I think it's okay for this tutorial. So this is how my cracks grow right now and start revealing all interfaces. And also, since I have this tessellate modifier, 
right after they were they were revealed the solution uh, make them more detailed you can actually set it here to trace as to two and if I will render my scene right now this is what I will get right now okay so, so this is my object uh, in current state and as you can see it uh, show cracks only where they were revealed inside this radius property uh, and as you can see this part is not revealed yet so if I will apply edible, edible mod poly again you will see that uh, so now just to select so you will see that uh, I have all these fragments back to the element uh, state and this one big uh, part still as one element until refire cracks uh, it's not revealed other faces so this is still one big element if I will scrub my time slider and say here to use tuck selection and I will need to delete it and apply one more time go to element so here's as you can see it uh, becomes bigger right now and I will increase it even more like so apply edible poly and only this part as one element right now and all other are separated elements so this is how this uh, new modifier works uh, so let me show you uh, some other properties you need to know how they works so let me show you how this weld what means this weld checkbox and uh, how, when and how you can use it and so uh, let's turn it off for this time and I will play editable poly one more time let's go to element and so if uh, I will select as uh, is not revealed part of uh, face which is the part of the face which is not revealed as you can see it selects only one face and uh, so I can in the same way move all the faces and you can see all of them separated right now this is just uh, one face one by one and uh, sometimes you need to have all this not revealed part as one object as one big element and this is where you need to weld all the stuff so let me remove editable poly and select it one more time if I will go to element select now as you see right now it's one big element all because all these uh, faces welded together so this is useful when you want to simulate your fragments later so let's say you can reveal half of the uh, geometry with cracks and second half will be as one big object which you can simulate as one big object and not just a bunch of faces so if you just render your cracks you can leave this weld off because it will be better because you will avoid some artifacts on renders but uh, if you want to later uh, break it using interactive demolition or any other way to break it it's better to have this weld checkbox on and this uh, property just simply defines a threshold for the weld uh, better to keep it as low as possible to prevent some artifacts also you can uh, use even if you want to demolish your uh, glass later you can have, have it off at the renders and uh, turn it on when you want to demolish your object also keep in mind that this property is animatable so you can have it off and at some point later you can turn it off turn it on I mean so as you can see now it's, now it's off and at some time let's say you want to demolish it at this frame you can turn it on and vault all these this faces into one big element okay so uh, next uh, what I want to show you is this probability spinner what does it mean as you can see it in groups of filters I will say about all these filters one by one so as you can see right now refire cracks revealed all interfaces inside this radius and playing with probability I can define how many percents I want to be revealed 
so I still can increase this radius but I can I will reveal only 30% uh, of faces and if I will set it to you can see one and you can see very few fragments revealed so using this property you can define how many uh, faces you want to reveal let's say I will set it to 50 and uh, go to frame 39 where I did my previous render and render one more time so as you can see now I have less cracks uh, some of them disappeared so using this probability spinner you can make your cracks more let's say believable okay next property is uh, the seat so uh, let's say I have probability it works only for probability spinner property so changing the seat you can change different patterns for the probability it works only for this spinner Okay, now I want to show how to use angle to center property and uh, how it can be used. Uh, first, I will apply a fire fragmenter to make some radial fragments. Uh, so, make bigger radius, more rings, more rays, and some divergence. So here's my fragmentation pattern. I will collapse it. And uh, my interface is selected as, uh, still. Uh, now I will add three fire cracks. And if I will animate this radius right now, okay, I will need to the center at the center of fragments here so it will start here and this is how it looks right now as you can see all these red cracks uh, appears uh, inside radius and you can see all of them so this is using this angle to center filter you can uh, uh, define angle from the face direction to the center which you uh, let's say if you want you don't, if you don't want to see all these faces which looks directly to the center you can decrease this angle to center and uh, okay now you can get only cracks which moves uh, from the center and doesn't look to the center and, and again you can animate uh, property uh, through time so let's say you can start with frame 0 it will be let's say 40 and uh, let's say like this so here's your crack start spreading and they're spreading only from the center and all these faces which looks directly to the center doesn't show up and then after some time uh, you start revealing them and until they go to the frame 90 and in the end you can you can uh, reveal all these cracks So you can start with these cracks and then at the end show all of them. And another property is face area. And for that purpose I will use another object. I'll use some helpers to make some special fragmentation. Use gears first. Use a ray fire to pre-fragment my object. Add it here, go to fragmentation, set for noise selection particle geometry type, and I will select the geospheres. Let's 
so I will keep them selected and um, here I will set that, that I want only let's say 50 at 80 percent of this vertices to be used and each vertex will uh, offspring three other points and the divergence will be five percent from original object size so I will say 70 keep fragment Okay, so here's my fragments right now. Select them. Uh, 874 fragments. And now I will add them into one object. I will attach them all. So right now this is one big editable poly. Assign some glass material. All interfaces still selected as you can see. Now I will apply ray fire cracks. And again I need to increase my radius because all those filters uh, affect only to serve only the faces inside the radius. Uh, you don't actually need to animate this radius, you can just have it on always. Uh, big big enough to cover all geometry. Uh, so uh, right now, as you can see, again, all the faces inside the radius radius uh, can be seen. And I will apply tessellation. Some negative value. Make some renders for you. So again, as you can see, all cracks can be seen right now. And using this face area, probably you can start revealing only the smallest faces. So this is uh, Springer defined defines area of face which will be revealed. And again, you can animate it. See, set to frame 80. It should be big enough to cover all faces, or maybe not not all. Maybe leave some biggest faces as is, like that. So you can keep to zero here, and this is what you can get on animation. So you can reveal all this. Uh, you can start reveal cracks from the smallest faces to the biggest. And again, you can go to crack view. Uh, this is a little bit more interesting. Like make it faster and slower. Say I will render it at frame 40. So as you can see, only smallest cracks revealed right now, and using this property, you can reveal them from the smallest to the to biggest faces. Okay, and now I want to show you how to use it with volume select support. And to do so, you have to add this volume select. Uh, here it is. Okay, since uh, I I already have all the inner faces selected, and the refire cracks affects only on selected se se faces, and it removes only selected faces. So all I need to do is uh, subtract uh, faces which I uh, don't want to be removed, and this will create uh, cracks for for me. So I have to uh, click here to face. And here I have to click to subtract. And now I need to go to Gizmo and play with this volume. So as you can see, here's this box Gizmo. It's uh, Gizmo for volume select, and uh, it uh, keeps selecting everything what what is not inside this Gizmo. So if I will turn on all these wires. If I will uh, apply right now 
or if fire cracks it will remove all select traces I don't need to play this radius even just to, you just need to apply this with fire cracks and uh, here's my gizmo and as you can see wherever I will move it it will I will have cracks at this place so I can animate this uh, scale and uh, get this animation of cracks such animation or you can use sphere any uh, methods which uh, volume select modifier provides uh, the one I like is to create some animated noise map I'll show you Here's my noise. Okay, I will put it here. Okay, I will apply it to this texture map as instance. Now I need to play with its high and low thresholds. Hard to see here, but uh, when I making it low, this high threshold property. If you see this in the viewport, I am start getting all these cracks in random manner, but very smoothly. So all you need to do is to play with this uh, high uh, threshold. So it will be one at the beginning and then 100 frames it will go to the low down okay like this so uh, at, at the end we can get all these cracks appeared like a noise map And another way is to use some geometry object, this volume select sport geometry object, so you can create some teapot, let's say, and uh, go to volume select, hit here mesh object, select this teapot, and I will make it uh, display as box, so you will see all cracks. So if I will now put it inside, so I will turn on the shadows. So as you can see, right when I put it, putting it inside the subject, it starts uh, leaving cracks. So you can use any geometry, and of course your geometry also can be animated. Okay, uh, now I want to show you how to use uh, this interrupt animation properties. Um, actually, these settings does not affect anyhow uh, on cracks animation. Uh, they can be used only using uh, this uh, wavefire mind floater here, and it help. Uh, these two properties helps you to define where and when uh, you want to demolish your object during simulation. So the first one is radius, defines at which radius you want to demolish it if your already is animated and frame defines at which frame so uh, let's say you have uh, animated radius like this one like so I will move it to center right here so here's my radius uh, the biggest radius is 129 121 and let's say you want to break it when it will be 
85 so you can set here 85 uh, add the subject into a dynamic list uh, or into slipping list uh, depends on in which list you uh, put it all fragments will be dynamics or slipping and again if you have if you uh, added it in slipping object list and your dead object switch on all fragments after fragmentation and demolition will be a uh, dead slipping object so right now I will put it into dynamic impact object list and uh, start simulation so uh, right now it should be demolished at frame 65 because this is the time when uh, it will uh, radius will reach the demolition radius So in this case you don't need to collide this object with anything, it will be broken in any case. Also you can notice that uh, you still have this original uh, object, this uh, Reify Crex modifier. And uh, as you can see it's invisible now because its visibility is zero. So it works like uh, you have uh, glass material. So, uh, if object has the rayfire cracks, this if object has this rayfire cracks modifier, uh, it will be it will use glass preset, which means that original object will be uh, it will change its visibility to zero and fragments will become visible. So, uh, until that moment, you will see this object with cracks and all the animation of cracks and uh, when it will be demolished you will start to see uh, fragments and the uh, original object will be invisible and in the same way you can use this frame so let's say I want to demolish at frame 80 start simulation and at frame 8 it will be demolished. 